Today I'm going to be unboxing this Tech 2 Scanner clone. Got it for 375 bucks shipped on eBay, which is way better than several thousand dollars. Um, my GM mechanic friend, uh, who has been GM mechanic for over 20 years, told me he uses one of these. And I decided to buy it because I need to do some diagnostics on this 2004 H1 Hummer I've got. Let's see what all this came with. And just to note, uh, not all of these packages that you buy from eBay and other sites come with all the same stuff. You'll notice some of them don't have very good reviews, some of them do have good reviews, so they're not all created equal from what I've been told. I'll put the link to this particular one in the description so that if you do want one, you can buy one yourself as well. So these are a few of the connectors that come with it. There's one, two, three, four, five different ones in here. It looks like the OBD2 plug, various GM diagnostic connectors, some kind of a serial connector. You got this one here. Power connector with two fuses in that block there. Another diagnostic connector. You've got your looks like what is this? The power source to plug into your cigarette lighter adapter. And a little RJ45 connector. I don't know exactly what it's for. I'm sure I'll find out. We've got the documentation CD and another documentation CD. Don't know what the difference is between the two. I'm not sure if I need them. And last but not least, we've got a power adapter. So it looks like it comes pretty complete with everything. I thought this one came with a case, but maybe it didn't. I'm going to look at the uh, eBay listing and make sure I got everything. Next thing I'm going to do is get it powered up, connect it to the vehicle, and see how it works. Wish me luck, and make sure to subscribe to get notified of the next video as I go through the functions and setting it up to uh, run diagnostics on our Hummer H1, which is gonna be the same as most of your late 90s, mid 90s, early 2000s GM and GMC trucks, Chevy trucks. All right, I am in the 2004 H1 Hummer. I've got the Tech 2 scanner hooked up. Apologize, it's dark, it's nighttime, not much light out here. Uh, I've got it hooked up to the cigarette lighter adapter. I've got the serial port plugged in. I've got the uh, CAN bus connector, the box connected to it as well. The OBD2 port uh, plugged on it and plugged in. Um, I've got some ABS lights here. These, are, uh, these two are related to the ABS, which I'm gonna deal with at a later time. More than likely, it's one of the magnetic sensors or the gears might be dirty. I'll, I'll figure it out at some other point. Low coolant light, uh, very common on these. Um, the low coolant light is due to the sensor that goes bad. Um, I'll see if I can diagnose that and clean contacts on it. If not, replace it. And no check engine light at this point, but I do get an intermittent high boost um, check engine light, more than likely because we put in a manual wastegate controller to raise the boost up a little bit. Um, and the boost is a little higher than usual and at this very same time that it throws the high boost code which is p0234 it also uh, triggers a p1867 code which is a torque converter lockup solenoid code um, if i drive normally at mid throttle three-quarter throttle 
I can drive around for 30 minutes, highway speeds, city speeds, no codes at all, but as soon as I hit that high boost code, it also generates the P1867. So what I'm gonna do is kick on this Tech 2. Let's see if it connects. Fingers crossed, uh, hopefully it works. I haven't had it connected yet, so you guys are gonna see the results of the first attempt at this. Let's get it powered on. It is connecting. All right, we're gonna hit enter. We are going to go to diagnostics. Select 2000, 2004. We're going to select medium duty truck for our H1. There it is. We're going to select Hummer H1. Powertrain is what we're going to be looking at. We don't have any DTC codes, check engine codes at this point because they're all cleared. What I want to see is the data display the transmission data display in particular. TCC data, that's what I'm looking for. Torque converter. Waiting for data. There we go. Duty cycle, counts, slip speed, etc. So what I'm gonna do is get uh, to where I'm close to the highway, then I'm going to click on quick snapshot and have it take a snapshot of me flooring it and see what sort of data we're grabbing. So we've got all kinds of cool stuff we can look at here. Um, oh, wait, let's go back. All right, we're going to look at powertrain, data display, which is uh, I think what's going to be most useful for me. Let's look at transmission data. Transmission data. All right. Shows us the engine torque currently at idle, engine speed, transmission, input, shaft speed, turbine speed, which I think is the torque converter. OSS, vehicle speed, which gear we're in, uh, the two shift solenoids, one, two, and two, three, the gear ratio, speed ratio, okay, transmission fluid, all useful information. Let's go back. Oh, wow, there's a lot in here. Oh yeah, it's counting how uh, how much the torque converter is slipping. Okay. Then we can look at torque converter specific data, the TCC data. Okay. The brake switch is closed. Okay. Okay. One, two, shift solenoid. Should be off, off, all around right now. Uh, or I guess on, off, because we're in park. All right. So all sorts of good data there. Um, the transmission adaptation data, which I think you can clear as well. It's interesting. I don't know what a lot of this means. But it's good data, I guess. Let's see what it shows for the engine data. We've got engine speed, desired idle speed, which is what it's set to, um, which I think you can change as well. The engine coolant temperature, ECT, 100, uh, 176 right now. While I was driving on the highway, uh, around 70 miles an hour uh, getting here just a little while ago. I 
tagged it at 203, temp, uh, 203 degrees Fahrenheit at a, a consistent 70 miles an hour. So really good uh, coolant temperature, even at higher highway speeds, sustained. Really happy with the coolant system and how it's cleaned up with the new 180 degree thermostats. Fresh coolant flush uh, through the radiator and the engine. And uh, I also have a uh, uh, higher velocity or higher CFM fan that I'll be installing, the engine fan, along with a fan clutch. Um, I'll put that in another video along with information of where I got it and the results I get from it. Um, so hopefully I can drive that even lower and maybe closer to 195 at highway speeds, around 65 to 70 miles an hour. Uh, I know a lot of these Hummers, the H1s, the 6.5 diesels, you generally run around 215, 220, 225 degrees even at highway speeds around 65, 70 mile, 75 miles, or 65 to 75 miles an hour, I should say. Um, if I can keep it under 200 at uh, those sustained highway speeds, I will be a very happy camper, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to install those here in a, in a few weeks. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notify button so that you're uh, notified of additional videos I'm uploading of this project. And uh, once we get there, we'll see what the results are. Uh, IAT is intake air temperature. The 6.5 diesels do not have an intercooler. So even though it's about 80 degrees outside, 134 degrees is our intake temperature um, because it's going past the turbo, which is hot. Uh, if you do want to add an intercooler to these 6.5 diesels, it's a huge benefit. Which I may do at some point down the line, not sure yet. That's uh, grams per second of air flowing through the MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor. We've got our boost pressure sensor. It says 14 psi at idle because ambient air pressure is around 14.7 psi. So that's actually our ambient air pressure. There's no actual boost in the engine right now at idle. Um, let's see what else is relevant here fuel temperature. Wow, that's pretty cool. It shows you your fuel temperature. I wonder if these H1s have a fuel cooler. If they don't, that'd be, a, that'd be an interesting to, thing to add as well if you're in warmer climates. Ambient air temperature sensor. That is definitely not the ambient air temperature right now. It's about 82 degrees outside, not 104. It's November in Austin, Texas. EGR position sensor, glow plug, TDC offset, these are all good data to look at as you're troubleshooting different things. Let's see, do we have a throttle position sensor in here? Cruise control, active, not active, all of those things. Uh, AC request signal. You know, my AC's not working, which is another thing I have to troubleshoot. I wonder if I turn it on, does it do anything? No, not doing a darn thing. I bet I have an AC relay or a fuse or something out somewhere. Okay, we'll troubleshoot that later. Um, what else? Transfer case lock. MIL is your check engine light, I think. Speed sensor. And we're down to the end. Back at the beginning. Well, the end result of this is that this Tech 2 clone from Hong Kong that I ordered on eBay, which I'll put the link down in the description below, does work on our lovely 2004 H1 Hummer. And um, it is going to help me diagnose a few little things that are going on. Uh, my ABS light that's on. Um, hopefully that'll help me diagnose that with the ABS uh, codes that are coming up on there. My intermittent check engine light, um, which is throwing two codes, P0234 for overboost because we installed the adjustable wastegate and P1867, which comes on at the exact same time, which I'm not sure is being triggered by the overboost DTC or is separate or not, but we'll make some adjustments, 
see what the result of that is. And uh, since it's showing me some codes related to AC signals on and off, maybe it'll help me diagnose uh, my air conditioning as well once I get to checking the relays and the fuses and all that stuff. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you guys that are looking at using a clone Tech2 scanner um, off of eBay for any of your GM vehicles. Uh, I'm using it on an H1 Hummer, but this thing is fantastic. It works, it's solid, it's just like the real thing, except it's only gonna cost you about 350 to 400 bucks, depending on which eBay seller you buy it from, and you're gonna be able to use it without shelling out four or $5,000. Uh, I would highly recommend it. Make sure you get it from a seller that has good reviews. There are some out there that have absolutely crappy reviews and I've heard don't work well. I'll put the link down in the description for the exact one that I purchased. If you wanna purchase the same one uh, or if you wanna purchase a different one, just make sure it's got good reviews. Anyway, until next time, love you guys. I am going to go winterize our boat drain all the water from the engine block and the outdrive because it's going to be freezing here next week uh, potentially and I'm going to be traveling for work so I'm here at the storage facility to drain the water out of this bad boy tonight in the dark wish me luck I love y'all see you next time